Jailed gangster Patrick Tate gave girls keep fit lessons in a local gym, then lured them back for sexy workouts in his prison cell. The push-up girls were a pushover for Tate when he was serving time for armed robbery in Spring Hill Open Prison Box. It was a typical stunt by the swaggering hard man who believed he was destined to be a Mr. Big in the seedy world of drug smuggling. But he pushed his luck once too often and ended up with his brains blown out on a snow-covered Essex farm track. Two pals died with him, victims of a cannabis deal that went wrong. The six foot two inches, 18 stone bodybuilder found the easy regime of Spring Hill very much to his liking. He organized booze parties in the cells and even set up lucrative drug deals with associates on the outside. A prison source said Pat got a job as a gym orderly, which meant that he could get special leave to get out and organize workout sessions. He was a very fit man, as well as being extremely good looking, and the girls loved him. He would really put them through their paces. He returned to prison with a group of girls who were very pretty and had lovely figures. The girls went into the prison and they had some booze with them. I think the officers knew what was going on, but people did not really want to mess with him. Pat enjoyed sex, and he really seemed to get it as often as he wanted it. You'd never have known he was serving time in prison. Sex and money were the driving forces behind the astonishing rise and fall a 37-year-old Tate the News of the World can reveal. Pretty blonde Lizzie Fletcher, who was dating Tate at the time he was killed, said, Being with Pat was just remarkable. I'd walk into a nightclub with him and everybody would move out of the way. The pair often went to Raquel's nightclub in Buzzardon, Essex. Lizzie, 22, said, I felt as though I had the words Pat Tate stamped on my forehead. Everybody would be looking at us. He had this way with people. They all respected him. It was a great feeling being with Pat. It was like nothing I'd ever experienced. Another female pal said, Pat had a tremendous personality and he looked gorgeous. Women would just fall at his feet and he had no shortage of offers. He often had a string of girls around him, but Lizzie was his favourite. One of Tate's former drug dealers, Kevin Sees, told how the hard man ran the lucrative vice trade in South End Essex. He said, Tate controlled South End. This meant drugs, hookers, and most of the clubs. He would give the girls drugs, then send them out to meet clients. They would do anything for him. Tate made thousands of pounds out of the girls and he was well known for services he could supply. They really doted on him and every now and then he would sleep with them. In the end, most of the girls relied entirely on him for their drugs. An underworld source said Southend was Pat's manor and no one worked there without his permission. He had dozens of girls working for him. Many of them were call out girls but Tate also had girls set up in flats and he would also take a cut of their earnings. He often had parties and there was always plenty of girls to go around. He did like girls because it suited his image. Scoffed sees 28, who is now going straight, said that Tate once threatened to kill him over a row over drug money. He added, when I heard he was dead, I did cartwheels. He was a madman who would stop at nothing. Tate's ambition to be a top criminal was born in prison. A source said, before Tate knew prison life, he was just a hard man, an uncut diamond, but he learned a lot while he was inside. People he met in prison used Tate's menace to get him what they wanted, but he soon realised he didn't need them, he could do it himself. Tate even scoffed at the legendary gangsters of the past. He dismissed the murderous crazed twins as a pair of silly little men. The muscle-bound giant was so feared by some prison guards that he ordered them about. Once, he fled to Gibraltar after doing a runner from a courtroom and had to be extradited back. Even then his guards allowed him to pop home and see his girlfriend as he was taken back to custody. The source said, Tate was given too much of a free run inside. Prison should be a deterrent, but for him it encouraged him to become a professional villain. Tate liked to live life on the edge. Girlfriend Lizzie Fletcher recalled how he once smashed a pal's Porsche sports car into a set of iron railings in South End Essex. The car was a write-off, but Lizzie escaped injury. Tate was as high as a kite on drugs, but police released him on bail. Smash Tate once persuaded Lizzie and a group of girls to join him and pal Craig Rolf on a trip to Ostend. But what the girls didn't realise was they'd been set up as unwitting couriers for thousands of pounds of the drug baron's ill-gotten gains. Meanwhile, Tate and Rolf got high on dope and amused themselves by smashing up an Ostend hotel. Lizzie said, I don't regret knowing Pat, I had a great time. Tragically, the same can't be said for thousands of youngsters who fell foul of the drug baron's evil trade in death 
and destruction. Oh.